So I got a new power station, solar generator, whatever you guys want to call it. Basically, this is about a thousand watt hour system. This one here is a thousand watt inverter, a thousand watt hour battery, and could be a good system to have for a DC fridge, charging drones, charging batteries, charging phones, laptops, all those kinds of things. So we're gonna put that to the test in this video to see how good this Amp Road Epic 1000 system is. There's a couple of things I don't like about it right off the bat, but there are some good things about it as well. So I'm gonna go over all of that in this video. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end. And let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm not going to get into all of the nitty gritty details of the specs because I'm going to put that all up right here on the side. But this Epic 1000 system was sent to me and I was unimpressed directly out of the box because it did not come with solar charge cables. So I had to buy these on my own. I'll have links down below. These are 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter barrel plugs that go to MC4 adapters. And then of course we've got the power brick, which has this special type of plug here. I'm not even sure what type of plug this is. I think they call it an aviation plug, but there's many different types of aviation plugs. Now, right off the bat, when you turn it on, the screen is actually in color, which is pretty cool, but you can see here it's at 93%. And I've had this for about a month now, and I've done little tests here and there as I've been getting used to it and testing other equipment, but I left this at a full charge just a couple of weeks ago, and it's already down to 93%. So that was a big concern to me right off the bat, that this isn't holding a charge very well. And for me, with my systems, like my Titan or my Delta or whatever, I like to keep them fully charged. That way, when I need them the most, they have the highest state of charge. But this does have a 1000 watt AC output. It's actually a 1039 watt hour battery. You've got DC here, you've got USB, and it's got flashlight built in, which is always really nice when you're in a small area and you need a light. But I wanna go ahead and get straight into the test of this. I'm gonna put a thousand watt load on this and just see how long it runs out of a 1C rate discharge. Well, I tried to top this off and it's been going for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so, and it's only gone up by 2%. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect it and we'll give a little bit of wiggle room for its runtime. Okay, we'll add about 60 seconds to it overall, just cause it took a minute to get things going here and I'll check in when this is done. this is really interesting. It's been going for basically 23 minutes and it just stopped completely on its own. And it still says here output 1000 Watts, but this is really warm and there are no fans blowing at all. So I don't know if this turned off because it's overheating. Oh yeah. Especially here on the sides. It's really, really warm. Um, almost to the point that I can't keep my hands on it, especially on this left side here. So I'm thinking it shut off because of a heat overload. AC power came back on, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the power usage a little. Nope, nothing at all. Oh, and the AC sign is back off. So I turn it on. Okay, so that turns on. Interesting, well, it's going again at a lower load. This is kind of interesting because here in the user manual, it actually has a section where it tells you how long it'll run at what load. And it says that a thousand watt load will run for about 50 minutes and an 800 watt load about 65 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this out at about an 800 watt load and just see how well this goes. Okay, well, it doesn't look like this is going to go much farther. I only got another five minutes or so out of it at an 800 watt draw and it just won't keep going. There are no fans running at all with this, and this thing is very, very warm, which is very surprising because there, oh, there's not even vent holes here. The front of this, which looks like vent holes, is completely sealed, as well as back here. These vent holes and these vent holes are not actually vent holes. They're completely 100% sealed. I was really wondering why there was no air flowing through this. I was amazed at how quiet it was. Uh, so for a hand warmer, it worked really, really well. But for non-stop high power output, 
it does not work really well. So sad to say that it's not going to do that heavy load, but it shouldn't have a problem doing a lighter load, say something running like something like a refrigerator or even a DC fridge or a TV, lights, fan, stuff like that. I'm going to check really quick if this is a regulated 12 volt outlet. And it is. It's staying at 13.1 volts and I measured it before starting and it was at 13.3 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some solar panels on this. So it is cool that it has two charge controllers and each one's rated to 120 watts. Now, I don't have 120 watt panels here, so I can't test that, but I am going to put two 100 watt panels on this and see how well it does. So let's go ahead and check that out. So yesterday it didn't work at all. This was still so warm that it wouldn't charge up. There was a temperature gauge here up in the top basically saying that it couldn't charge. And I've been running this now for a little bit and this panel has gotten over 100 watts and I can't run both of these at the same time. And that's what I was told, but uh, I have been able to get 103 watts out of this single 100 watt panel. This is the rigid 100 panel from poweredportablesolar.com. That's why I like them. They truly produce the most amount of power. So I'm only getting about 30 watts right now and that's because the clouds have come in. But either way, I cannot get both of these to work at the same time. And I was told that they would work that way. So I don't know if you can see the screen, but it just hit 95 watts, just hit 100 watts there on this left side. So even though this says input, it doesn't seem to be doing anything as far as input. So that is pretty lame because that is different than what they advertise. And I hate it when companies advertise something that it doesn't do because people buy this equipment based on the information advertised. That's why I started poweredportablesolar.com. It's why I review products like this, because so often companies do this where they advertise one thing and you actually get another. It's why I will never give a true recommendation unless I've personally tested it. I'm going to let this sit here and see how high this wattage will get, see uh, what kind of solar input we can get. Okay, well, it's been an hour and a half now. You can see we're at 51%, so not even up a full 10% yet. But basically, this is what you get in real world conditions. It's not a perfectly clear sunny day. It's not a cloudy day. It's slightly overcast with blotches of blue and a little bit of thin cloud. So I honestly expected a bit more. But overall, it did let in about 103 watts here on the maximum that I saw through this single 100 watt panel. So that makes me think that the MPPT charge controller in here is pretty good because it was actually getting more than 100 watts out of this 100 watt panel. Well, that's kind of too bad with the solar. But now one of the things that I want to check is can I be charging this and running some equipment off of it? So I'm going to take the charger here, put it right here in the back and need to plug something in. Go ahead and plug in the lights again. So we've got 186 going in. We should have close to around 800 going out. So in regards to it being like a UPS, it would work really well for that, an uninterrupted power supply. So for example, I could have my refrigerator plugged into this because a 1000 watt inverter is definitely large enough to handle a refrigerator. And this should run a refrigerator for about six to eight hours, roughly, depending on how full it is and how warm it is in the house and all sorts of different factors. Sadly, it didn't do as well as I really had hoped it was going to do. It's got some decent specs. It's a good size little unit. So it's got some pros, it's got some cons. You guys do what you want with the information. But I think that this is an okay unit. So right off the top of my head, I'd probably go with like the EcoFlow Delta Mini, which is very similar to this, a slightly smaller battery, uh, or even the River Pro, which is also from EcoFlow, or even the Bluetti EB70. It's a little bit smaller battery, but all three of those units have larger solar input, similar inverter capacity, and maybe a slightly smaller or slightly bigger battery than what this has here. And all of that can be found at poweredportablesolar.com. Comment down below if there is something that you might use this for. So I could see me using this for something like a security system. The security system I use, I could plug into this, into the main hub, which would run all of my cameras and everything like that. And I could keep my security running if the power went out. And the battery would probably last me at least a full day. And I could also see it as like a UPS or a refrigerator, but that's the most useful way I see using this is as a UPS or just for camping, like car camping or taking to recharge e-bikes and stuff like that. It might work really well for that. Has some quirks and it has some application. Now I've already given you my recommendations, but I do feel that having a backup power supply is a necessary part of emergency preparedness. And I find that the power stations and solar generators are the easiest way to do that. So make sure you stay prepared. Go to poweredportablesolar.com to get more prepared. And I will see you guys in the next video.